special edition is on South Africa. Highlighting the tourism champions who burn the midnight oil with their passion for South Africa. South Africa is a kaleidoscope of unique, iconic, hidden gems intertwined with world-renowned top 10 attractions, namely the Kruger National Park, Table Mountain, Robben Island, Cape Winelands, the Drakensberg, Isimagunliso Wetlands Park, the Durban Golden Mile, Blade River Canyon, Vilakasi Street, which is home to three Nobel Peace Prize winners, namely Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, and Albert Latuli. South Africa also is the foremost suppliers of gold and diamonds to the world. Or you can choose to sip wine at a famous wine farm. Or consider the birthplace of world democracy and follow the footprints of legends like Mandela and Gandhi to victorious freedom. We offer a diversity of cultures, delectable cuisine like Biltong, Burevos, Malva Pudding, Chakalaka, Rai and Bunny Chow. And our unique captivating attractions are also on the menu. As a country, South Africa continues to inspire ourselves and the world with unique new better ways of overcoming challenges. Innovation inspires new ways to discover the roots of life. Best describing the natural character, values and fabric of the people. Tourism is everyone's business in South Africa. Good afternoon. This is Bunny Bula reporting live for the Dope News on our series, African Voices. And today we have indeed a very special young man, a good friend, a colleague, somebody who hails from the thundering waters of Zambia. Walter is from Sego Travels in Zambia and he has spent many years showcasing Zambia to all his enthusiastic and inquisitive friends from all corners of the earth, including his own family and neighbors. Walter basically speaks many languages. Wow, you you multi-skilled. Hey, Walter. you fluent in German, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. And Sego Adventures and Tours is specifically designed to provide and organize affordable yet comfortable holiday activities. Accommodation, tours and safaris across Zambia are your areas of speciality. All your vehicles are air conditioned and your staff is highly experienced. So they can assure you that they will give you wonderful memories of Zambia. Walter is very hands-on in his business. He caters for any group size, big or small. Thus, you will get personal uh, service from Walter in your personally tailor-made holiday program. The Sego Travel offers you your airport transfers, safari, car hire, activities, to a, uh, tours in Zambia and any cultural experience. So making him the perfect destination management company for Zambia. And the most important thing is they strive to find collaborative activities that help Sego Travel to create sustainable socioeconomic impact on tourism activities at the cultural heritage and conservation of the environment. Wow, Walter, you're doing excellent work in Zambia. You're really one of the tourism champions, my brother. So now we have come from an exciting pre-COVID time. 
Yeah. Where yeah. you really had a lot of plans and dreams for this year. But the last nine months has been one of the greatest challenges in our passion in our life. You want to tell us a little bit about how COVID has impacted your company and the tourism industry in Zambia? Yeah, thanks, Bunny. Um, as you've heard, my name is Walter from Seagull Adventures and Tours, based in uh, Livingston, Zambia. Indeed, COVID-19 came in as a thief, stole everything from us, and it's been like, uh, uh, I don't know, I can't even describe it. So like, so I think uh, in February, when I met Bunny at the Meetings Africa, in South Africa, we were planning all these big groups coming to Zambia, and all these tours coming to Zambia and we're ready to like start our our new season starting March up to the, up, up to somewhere in um, December but boom it was declared that uh, the COVID-19 was a pandemic and everything just fell down so you see um, as much as it has uh, done more harm than good but again you see uh, I took it like you know I should get something from this negativity. What is it that, that we can do? Yeah, the, the, the damage has been done already. Uh, we lost the businesses. But um, what else can we do? What, what, what good things can we find from the, from the pandemic? So uh, from March, I, I spent most of, I think most of the time uh, trying to help people to reduce the use of firewood. Uh, to use the use of trees by constructing biogases in, in, the, in, the, in the rural areas. So that has been like a positive part of me that uh, at least I'm trying to, to reduce uh, deforestation to, to fight the climate change. Generally, <clears throat> most businesses in, uh, in Zambia, more like in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the tourism sector, they were, I think, they closed down as well as April. All hotels were down. All supply companies were down. And uh, looking at Stone, tourism is its main stay, its its main uh, activity. So all the suppliers uh, of goods and services to, to the to the tourism in industry, they felt the impact. So actually, most people lost their jobs. As, I, as I'm talking now, people are they're all in a surviving mode. And so we're looking forward to a situation where we should uh, look for something, just in case we have the same thing in future. What else can we do to, 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 to generate income? So actually, it has done a lot, a lot of harm. Even uh, in other cities now, like uh, from... Uh, somewhere in, uh, in July. So other sectors like agriculture, um, manufacturing, felt uh, this impact a bit late. But now, as I'm talking now, people are not uh, doing well in terms of their businesses. It's, it is quite tough. Um, yeah, but again, on, on the other hand, like, like I said, we must look for something positive out of this negative thing. So, so I think, I think that's what I did. Like, like I spent time, I, I am um, in the rural areas, trying to help people to reduce the, the the cutting down of trees. Wonderful! What a uh, great experience that is, Walter. Uh, now, Walter, your um, airports are open. Currently, Zambia is uh, allowing people into the country. Is there any specific country that you uh, uh, people are not allowed to come in? And what is your quarantine policy currently in Zambia? I think Zambia was uh, the second or so country to open its airspace and open its borders. But now, because Zambia is a land-linked land -linked country, not landlocked, no, land-linked country, uh, uh, mostly we depend our arrivals from um, South Africa because most of the flights come through South Africa, through South Africa to come to 
to, to Zambia. But uh, after Kenyan Airways started opening up coming in Kenya Airways, it, uh, EK and also ET, I think um, it has, uh, it has a, few people, a few people have started coming through. So we don't have any quarantine uh, uh, bodies as at now. The only need that one has to do is to get the, the COVID test certificate at least two weeks before travel. So that gives somebody a lot, a lot of time to plan uh, and also execute his journey. So it's two weeks prior to traveling. So you have two weeks for you to come to Zambia. So and then if, and then, and then when we reach our airport, okay, we also have some um, testing uh, uh, staff there from the host, uh, from the host sector. So if you have found to show signs of, um, of, um, of having a COVID-19, uh, they're gonna give you, I mean, they're gonna get your details. And then uh, if, if you're told you are a tourist, and then let's say like you're moving in a, in a, in a group, you have to, to, to tell the, the people, the people from the house where you're gonna be going on your trip. In short, you have to show them your itinerary. So, so after that, when the results are out, in case you are negative, then it's, it's, it's all good. But in case you become positive while on the trip, you'll be taken to, 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 to our health facility that's going to treat you. Uh, now, uh, who will pay for that treatment? Will the state cover the cost or will it be on the client's account? It will be on the client's account. Okay, so uh, clients must have adequate travel insurance now when they're coming into, uh, into Zambia. Exactly. No. And now, uh, what, what is your Victoria Falls looking like at the moment? You know, Bunny, for, for, for whatever reasons, I was shocked, right? I went to the falls, I went to do, because no, I was, I was just home all this time. I went to the falls to do white water rafting. You know, the water level that is, the, that was there about two weeks ago, you'd be shocked. Like, um, that was the water level that we had about in last year, in, uh, in August, last in August. Right. This year, the water level, this year, water level, the force didn't drop so much because, because up to now we still have water, still have water dropping on, on our Zambian side. So, so this year, for 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 what for whatever reasons, we still have the water. Yes, I do believe that the falls is looking absolutely magnificent oh, at the moment. You can say that again. <laughs> so you uh, uh, you are inviting the clients to come in and see the smoke that thunders. Man, you know, actually, you know, um, by the way, if you just didn't know, the falls is about uh, 1.7 kilometers wide. Okay. And then it is shared with two countries, Zambia and Zimbabwe. Right. Then um, Zambia owns about 1.2 kilometers of the falls. Zimbabwe only about 0.5 kilometers of the falls, but if you go back in history, I think I think I think, I think even to date, people know that the falls is in Zimbabwe, because of their town that was named after the falls, Victoria Falls town. But you see, what you should know is that okay, when Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi were under the British rule, it used to be one country. So. Uh, Zimbabwe was called Southern Rhodesia, Zambia was Northern Rhodesia, Malawi was called Nyasaland. And then when they came to the Falls region, there was Vic Falls town in Zimbabwe, that was uh, our town in um, Zambia called Livingston. Now, L Livingston was made to be an industrious town, whilst Vic Falls was made to be a holiday the destination town. So this is why uh, when there was this publicity about the Big Falls, uh, they were promoting the Big Falls that when people come from Europe or wherever, they'll come and stay on, on the Zim side of the falls because Livingston was meant to be an industrial town. So, oh, so Livingston was, I think, I think they were producing uh, 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 timber products. We also had uh, 
a motor car assembly, TV assembly, radio assembly, uh, also the, the food processing, the generates, all those things. They all used to be in, in Livingstone. This is why until 2010, no, until when Sunny International, in the early 2000, came in Zambia to, to buy the Intercontinental Hotel, to turn it into Zambezi Sun and also the Royal Livingstone, we had few beds in, in Livingstone compared to Zimbabwe. By now, we've got more beds in Zambia compared to Zimbabwe. So, but you see, but you see we, don't, okay, we don't work as a competition, no. We just, we, we collaborate. We work as a team with the guys across. Tourism is all about collaboration. Exactly. I think we, we are a wonderful breed of people because we are, we just love our jobs. We have so much of energy. I've seen it in you. I've seen it in all my brothers and sisters across yeah. Africa. Uh, Walter, can we just look at the future? You know, what strategies are you putting into place to try and encourage people now to start coming to Zambia? Uh, considering we have all these challenges. Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost, um, we are trying to put some promotions, I think for the next one or two years. So I have been in talks with most service providers who are also agreeable. Like, you know, guys, we need to to like invite people to come through, but with uh, with an incentive. So that is already going uh, well. And again, on, on the other hand, I think on my part, I've also taken time to develop other tour products that have been never done before. Okay? Uh, wow. people, yeah, people have not been there before. So now whatever will be coming on now to be something new, because so we're trying to to promote the culture tourism, like real culture, not the staged culture, no. Real culture to, to tourism, that actually the, the most people were, were like looking for for something new. But you see, Bani, okay, if, if you were busy, like the way we are, we're always busy all, 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 all these years, we don't have the time to look for new products. Okay, we are, we are always busy looking for I mean, doing the same things every now and then. By now, I think this time, because of this pandemic, it gave us gave me time to like to to think outside the the box and develop some new products. So just once we start working like the way we work, I I, I believe and think we're gonna have a. Uh, I think we're going to have a, a flood of business. <laughs> Absolutely, I agree with you. Mother Nature has actually given us the opportunity to become more creative. And I think your uh, USP is going to be culture tourism. Yeah. It's so important to diversify your products yeah. so that you can uh, different streams of income coming in. And this is what COVID has taught us. Uh, given us a lot of patience and opened our minds to the other opportunities. What do you think? Uh, Bani, I think the, on that one, you are 100% correct. I see, um, you know, I think we were glued to the one thing that we, we've been doing all these years and years and years. And then you see, and I think, uh, I think, okay, I remember one time when here comes a, a tour operator from uh, from uh, Germany. I said, hey, Walter, you know what? What's something? I want something new, something that has not been done before. What can you do to me? What, 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 I mean, what can you propose? But, oops. Okay, because I had the same generic tours that everyone was like, uh -huh. like selling. So, um, when... Uh, so I started thinking outside the box all these years. Okay, what is it such that we can do? So I thought, okay, uh, people haven't gone that side. People haven't done that thing. And then I also went on Google, like to to Google and check if that culture has been documented. Um, I think on Google. I think out of the searches, I only found two two people who wrote about it, but though it was not detailed, it was just something that I think, okay, this is not good. So, 
So personally, I said, we're going to look at new opportunities now that with, um, with a new, new uh, breed of clients that are going to look for something new. So I think uh, on that one, you, you are very right. Oh, that sounds very, very good, Walter. In closing, Walter, what is your message to the industry partners and to uh, clients that will be coming through to you? My final message is, you know, guys, uh, Zambia is not only about the falls. Zambia is not only about the safaris. We've got a lot of things to do, things we can do in Zambia. Are you aware that Zambia has got about... Uh, 40% of the fresh water bodies in Southern Africa, that's in Zambia. So, um, again, we, we also have some other products that, that have not been sold before. If you go to the, to, to the northern part of Zambia, you find uh, the white sand beaches on uh, Lake Tanganyika, also at, on uh, Lake Bangweulu in Safia. We also have other, I think we also have about 19 other falls waterfalls in in, in 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 those areas and then those are not areas that are explored they are still unexplored so people come through to zambia tell us what you want to do and we'll be able to to to, to plan in case you're not sure of what you want to do talk to water it's, it's going to give you a tailor-made itinerary thanks bunny absolutely walter's the star in zambia and I think your USP on cultural tourism and on the numerous waterfalls that needs to be still discovered by lots of people, you indeed have some exciting new uh, products that will entice the market to come through to you. Yeah. So yeah. it's been wonderful, wonderful chatting to you. You really are a tourism champion in your area. Thank and you, Bunny. All I can say you is all the best, my brother. I'm very sure, slowly but surely, the wheels will tick and with all your products, people will be able to be coming, streaming back into Zambia. True, true. Thanks, Bunny. This is Bunny Bula for uh, the Dope News on our special series, African Voices, signing off. I urge you to... Uh, like our Facebook and all social media platforms and looking forward to our next episode. Thank you so much. Bye.